Good morning, Trumptopia! This is your wake up call. Are you still hitting the snooze button? Welcome to the show. I'm your incorrigible host, Mr. Zeppo. And yes, incorrigible is a real word. Thank you very much. As always, this and every one of my uh, other podcast miniseries is brought to you by your generous donations at patreon.com forward slash Mr. Zeppo. The delightful people at Sprecher have made a great platform for creating podcasts. Uh, the, the joyful free music at a freemusicarchive.org and uh, there's a third thing I wanted to thank but I can't quite remember what it is right now I'm forgetting and I'm being a schmuck and talking about it so thank you for tuning in I am as always your humble and slightly disorganized podcast host the incorrigible Mr. Zeppo and friends today I want to warn you, tell you to brace yourselves for the slow unveiling of Trump's fire and fury, or total lack thereof, as North Korea continues to uh, lob missiles into the ocean for no reason, and bluster on and on about nuclear bombs. For everybody who's worried about nuclear bombs, and for everybody who's worried about North Korea having a nuclear bomb, because that might mean that a nuclear bomb goes off somewhere, let me remind a friendly reminder. Allow me to present to you a friendly, polite, non confrontational reminder. The governments of the free world, quote unquote, have already detonated in our lifetimes, in the, in the living memory, since Hiroshima and Nagasaki were uh, flattened by nuclear bombs. Over 2,000. It, it has, in our lifetimes, been slowly escalating towards 3,000 bombs uh, of at least the size of the two first used in war, if not Half again, double again, three times again, four times, eight times, 20 times bigger than the original. 3,000. Not quite there yet, but they're getting there. I mean, if you throw North Korea's seven in, because they've been very actively testing, right? Which is what freaks us out. I don't want to get too pessimistic with my first episode back after a, a brief hiatus, but let's let that let's let's take a moment to like breathe through whichever one nostril you believe is the one special nostril that cures your anxiety. Because do that, it does. Sort of a deep, slow breathing through one nostril for some reason really does sort of disengage anxiety mechanism. Um, and and. Let it really sort of, let the shoe drop on that. I 
Have I already done an episode about this? I'm sorry. Let's move on. Um, today's episode of Good Morning Trumptopia, coming at you at the almost not the morning time of 1119, on the 16th day of the ninth month of the first year of Glorious Trumptopia, uh, is a deep discussion about Trump's true tactical trend. And I chose that for the alliteration, and I really sort of wanted it to be pattern. Trump's true tactical pattern. And there's enough T's in pattern to sort of sustain the alliteration regime there, but uh, but I also wanted to be hardcore about it. In bold type, on the headlines of New York Times, with the byline, be incorrigible, Mr. Zappo, Trump's true tactical trend. Why did I give it to the New York Times? I don't know. I'm making that up. You know, obviously, I don't exist. I'm a fictional character. Uh, I can pen op-eds that are fictionally published at any real or fictional journal that I want. Um, but I'm, I'm speaking to you, it, it to you now. Sorry, I'm a little rusty, folks. Uh, and I don't have an oil can handy. Help, help. Anybody? Wizard of Oz? No? Okay. That movie's beyond forgotten. Uh, Trump's two true tactical trends. Say that five times fast. And then ask yourself, what is he talking about? I don't know about you, my friends, my family, my fellow Trumptopians, my human beings that are listening to this because you want to, uh, you're fascinated by my bizarre and unusual take on all things Trumpus, POTUS, Absurdicus. Hashtag Trumpus, POTUS, Trumpus, POTUS, Absurdicus. Right there, my friends. That's a new one. I invented it. I gotta write that down. Trumpus, POTUS, Absurdicus. Dicus, right? D I C U S, D I K U S, D I C K U S. I'm not sure. Um, there's a lot of spin, a lot of hype, a lot of talk, a lot of analysis, and honestly, I have never, in my adult life, the entirety of my adult life, watching politics and watching the news, never have I ever experienced, and. I, I get it. Those of you who every time I mention this go like, stop, turn off your TV, kill your television. <phone rings> Settle down now. Simmer down there. I get it. I know that. I'm aware of it. I'm I'm all about telling the people, the sheeple, to, to chuck their television right out their apartment window and then get really upset about it because it costs them a lot of money and then you know, go buy another one. Uh, no, uh, the television is horrible for you and you should be watched extremely judiciously, if not at all. But the problem is we still have to know what's going on. And for all intents and purposes, not intensive purposes, as was elucidated on by a co-worker of mine at my day job recently, to much comic effect, uh, the news is the most convenient way for me to stay on top of world events. But here's a trend that I've noticed, you guys. Watching the various ways in which the media... Uh, and I'm not claiming to have extensively surveyed all platforms. I wish. That's, that, that's the vision. That's the hope. Is, is to have the resources and the staffing and personnel and... and, and uh, payroll capital to to survey everything. I wish I could I could eagle eye fucking Breitbart and know what they're going to come out with before they come out with it. But I can't. But I do watch enough of, and consume enough of a little bit of everything with that giant salt lick round of grain of salt of understanding that it's all coerced one way or another because of the way the system is structured 
and the fact that the entirety of the system is inculcated in the oppression that we're all anxiously debating and discussing and arguing about how best to revolt away from. Resistance and revolution, my friends. Uh, but let's take a uh, let's break it down. What am I actually talking about? I've just been spinning my wheels about the title. Trump's Trump's true tactical trend. What is he really doing? Versus what is he being perceived of as doing? Versus what's actually getting done? And examples. I think the cleanest, simplest one is the Muslim ban, which was never an effective ban on anybody from anywhere, even the countries in the list. If you really looked into it, if you really looked into it and got it in like got into the analysis of the details of the actual because uh, it wasn't legislation right it was it, it was a presidential decree no what's the word a presidential dictatum uh, no a presidential memento mo, uh, memorandum whatever it was uh, that which he probably bitched and moaned about and many of his many of his supporters probably bitched and moaned about presidents before of the democratic variety doing uh, but he just wrote a thing down on a piece of paper and then signed it for everybody to look at his signature and that's it. Like that's not law, that's the president expressing his opinion as a piece of paper that the cameras look at. Um, and it's really critical, and this is what's important to understand. I think it's, they did such a good job of normalizing Twitter long before Trump ran for office uh, in terms of media and how media is consumed. That would, even the debate about Trump's Twitter use is so uh, nonchalantly like blase and meaningless because it, whatever he says on Twitter, it's not law. It's by definition, not presidential decree or presidential memorandum or anything. Uh, it's just something he wrote in 140 characters or less on Twitter, and that it can it just it it just takes up so much time and so much news cycle uh, that we we successfully get underinformed about what, what's going on in the world. Okay. Now, lots of people have criticized him for his Twitter use, and lots of hay has been made about its uselessness or its inappropriateness, its lack of presidential dignity, and how much that he should experience, he, he should be reined in. He should ex express self-control. That's not going to happen, folks. Uh, there's a bigger pattern here going on with him, and it's, it's quite evident, I think, once you really look at it. Oh, I, never in my adult life observing politics has this little amount of time felt as painfully long and protracted. If nothing else, that uh, for me personally, that that Trump has done is sort of put the brakes on that that whole phenomena of feeling like. Uh, time is just going by faster and faster the older you get and, and how un, no matter how hard that is to quantify I think a lot of people innately connect to it or identify with it this sensation that somehow really minutely or even exponentially wildly um, our grip on time our the way in which we sit through time the rate in which we it passes by us in our given moment of nowness um, seems to be accelerating. I've always maintained um, pretty adamant adherence to the reminder of the tactical statement or the technical statement, technical statement that time does not exist. The cosmos is infinitely unfolding, and the, some aspect of that infinitude unfolding is what we somehow very misaccurately measure as time, in large part because we live in a world in which there's 
sunlight and nighttime for whatever reasons, whether the world is flat or round, the sun does what it does and the moon does what it does and we invented a system and called it time. Uh, but we're not measuring the passage of anything at all, right? We're marking and honoring the demarcation of the movements of the star, soul, in extreme close proximity to this little cradle we call Earth, this living womb that we call Earth, etc., etc. Um, I digress. My friends, I had someone tell me to my eyes, to, you know, it, eyeball to eyeball in real life discussion, that he thinks Donald J. Trump may have had a, a mild to medium severe bad seizure or, or some other sort of similar health emergency. And that this is the, you know, his cray cray is the rendering of that. Um, and that he heard someone address it in some, some comments somewhere. And that comparing the way he speak he speaks now with the way he spoke in let's say in nine, the late nineties or early aughts is, is so radically different um, that it's plausible. Uh, I propose a deeper thesis, and that's that since all human beings are part of this living fractal hologram called the human species. And though it very vividly simulates individuation for us and creates this personal life for each iteration of us to exist through, um, all of us are in a primal way, in a primal place, deeply interconnected. Um, and, and it's just something that we neglect, right? I don't need to go into depth too much of that. I've talked about that on several episodes of this and other segments um so trump's no different trump's part of that network part of that system and duh clearly manifesting unadulterated ego as uh you know as political puppet for deeper negative dark political ego agenda um and he's he's not insane or or crazy, I don't think. He's quite masterful. And here's where I want to get some concrete statements. Um, as with the Muslim ban and with the the, uh, the transgender ban for the military, although the military sort of promised to be chill about looking into things and, and, and whatnot, I, I haven't seen any clear responses to whether or not anything that Trump has done in terms of actual uh, technical law enforceable change to policy anywhere, I don't see any evidence for that. I see that he tweeted about it and that he maybe shot an email to somebody asking them to look into it, but I don't know that he actually instigated or signed into we i might have missed it right maybe i'm i'm in, living under a rock and fixated on the wrong things and this is a horrible example but uh more recently daca and this threat to to get rid of it in, in a matter of a fortnight fortnight's time uh, which is just a measurement of right? It's a unit. It's a construct, a measurement from Shakespearean days, uh, and uh, it, it just a matter of a fortnight. You went from sort of saying that we're going to protect the dreamer kids to that there's going to be no amnesty, which is a word for like welcoming kindness or something, right? Like isn't that what it originally means? Um, and that uh, that that we're going to stand by them. We love them. And, uh, you know, almost intimating that they will be deported and then re reassuring them that there's nothing to worry about. 
Because whatever is about to happen, there will be no action. This is what I mean by his true tactical trend. It's not foibles in cluster. I mean, I long, long time ago, um, in a song not so far away, I called Donald J. Trump and his attempt to run for office a clusterfuck of fail. And if you don't believe me, look it up. It's in one of my uh, Instagram pictures from a, uh, you know from a million months ago. What it literally feels like a lifetime and a half ago that this clown rode down a golden escalator, most certainly after having taken a shit in a golden toilet. Um, and he's riding down this golden escalator, this gold-plated escalator, in front of paid extras. We all know the trope, right? Like, it, we saw it, we all saw it live and watched the news around it break. He's geniusly able to use the magnetism of charisma to tactically divide and infuriate because he whips his base whips them into a frenzy about shit that they don't understand that they don't really know the real practical pragmatic logistical details about at all he rides emotion and he manipulates emotion and truly out of all the I don't think I've lived to see the day that a president wasn't compared to Hitler. Uh, I can't speak to the presidents before I was alive here in this dimension on your continent in the boundaries of your country um, as a foreigner from another time, place, portal, continuum, thing ideally. Uh I ran out of vocabulary there and didn't know what to call it. But uh, <laughs> to keep things sounding normal, in my adult life, every single president has been compared to Hitler by somebody. Okay? And throughout my entire uh, aware, paying attention adult life, which, by the way, I, I start the clock on that at like seven and a half years old. Like, I woke up to shit because my parents let me watch the news with them. Uh, and I just realized not simultaneously that the the medium in which they were delivering the information of pertinent events of the day you know was stilted and spun a certain direction that clearly propped up politics in America or was designed to echo chamber politics in, in America that also is sort of like that the, history is this epic bashing of our own faces against the brick wall of our uh, open air cage you know that our oppressors have ingeniously already built around us there's a there was a great set of memes floating around this week um that are so trumptopia and one was a comic with and i'll i would give credit right now and name the artist's name but i don't remember it off the top of my head and i'm ready i was supposed to look these things up but I've just been sort of free flowing. That's not the meme I'm talking about. That's a different meme that I made that does not fit in here. At any rate, it's it's a great like newspaper comic. Uh, sort of style, uh, single frame, single cell. It's a man at, a, at being interviewed. And my first thought was a therapist's office, but then I realized it could also be like a job interview. But the, the sick commentary is um, in the man's response. And, I, and I, to paraphrase, because my memory is a bit faulty, uh, quite possibly climbing over the wall to escape into Mexico. You know, quite quite the bone chilling response to where do you see yourself in five years uh, so there's some things that have been pretty consistent 
in my observations, and that's that Nazism is always used as a divisive tactic to test the waters to see how much violence can get whipped up and in what quarters and amongst what people. That uh, white supremacy in its generic American sense has always been baked into politics. Uh, just look at the original wording of the original constitution, slaves, and by extension of logic, um, all who are not white men are not full humans. I digress. So Trump's genius is to dog whistle both sides of a divide. He get he annoys and whips up and gets the haters hating with his uh, fascist ten leaning tendencies because he's not really a fascist, but his tendencies lean in that direction. The way in which he speaks leans towards a fascism sort of. You can imagine a Trump fascism regime quite vividly, quite easily. Right? But he is not himself actually it, doing it now. Um, but he, and here's the thing, and this is what's important. He does it to whip up and infuriate and get both sides red in the face, angry, and afraid of each other. Um... To that end, he flip-flops on anything and everything and will double, quadruple flip-flop on something in the same day or the same week and says things and executes as much as he can um, to be as, as outrageous as he can as long as there are no consequences. So... All of his tactics take into account the probability of consequences. The more flagrant the statement, the more the more likely it is that he thinks or understands that whatever the consequences are, they are very meaningless to him. Because it's not like there aren't any consequences. There's just very few that are very impactful directly to him. And he's well aware of that. Uh, you know, all of these things that he does are to fuck with you, to piss you off. And if you love him, it's to see how far you'll go in blindly allowing him to direct your rage. Why? Is he a Nazi? No. Is he a Russian MK Ultra spy? Probably not. Is he a robot from the future? I wasn't informed, and I thought I would, you know, like, I know the robots are coming, and that's, you know, that's a subject I've spoken out against and about for 30 years. The robots are coming, folks. It's inevitable. Yet here we are thinking about, um, worrying about ways to kill each other uh, with guns and bullets and tanks and bombs and planes and in the name of religions that were founded by people who sacrificed their lives to stand up for peace and nonviolence. It's, it's, it's like we've already been lobotomized, folks, and no one can see it. Can you... For anybody who's ever been angry at a Christian for being a complete and total, like hypocritical nut job you, you have to stop and realize that every dimension of society is that and has been for longer than we care to acknowledge I'd like to point out that in my theory it has been this fucked up since before the Tower of Babel we fucked ourselves so hard we've already fucked ourselves to the Stone Age and back again it's not like we should be worried about doing it to ourselves soon. We just did. 
okay? Uh, and thus, and this is a critical aspect of my thesis, folks. For those of you who are new to the show, wham! Uh, spoiler alert, I'm getting right to the, to the, the, you know, the delicious cream filling of like what's at the center of my thesis about Trump and about the establishment of Trumptopia. Trump is none of the conspiracy theories. None of the things that we've heard in conspiracy. Trump is just exactly what you and I are. A human being living out the vivid, cyclical, organic drama of ego versus Christos. And in this iteration, in this life cycle, that avatar was destined or doomed to play the part of the narcissist buffoon that fucks himself and the country into a horrible place uh, because we're overdue because we always must collapse our own empires as we have over and over and over again because we set up our own empires we become our own enslavers we profiteer on our own suffering and we uh you know murder and and murder and murder and murder in the name of our gods of peace and uh, and we go insane because of it and we've been doing this for centuries and we've been doing this for that long because those who are truly in the shadows the, you know, the people who are truly behind the green curtain uh, pulling all really really pulling all the levers they know these secrets they know these truths they understood them from a long time ago and they nurture the spiritual illness of ego and ego corruption and ego greed and ego lust and ego thirst for blood and ego uh, depravity and all the things that ego is and all the ego traps that ego can lay for us. And what has to be understood in order to resist Donald Trump, we have to comprehend attend to forgive nurture and heal ourselves and each other first and foremost because if we do that at an exponential grassroots movement scale here in america and the worldwide and we abdicate ideological nonsense and we stop fighting with each other uh in face in face to face face conflicts and we stop shooting each other over ideas about politics and we stop blaming each other for all the things that are wrong in with our society because we can't blame each other and blame society when we are society it's a meaningless exercise if we can achieve the organic and innate god-given gift the birthright of enlightenment at a individual level at a partnership level at a community level at a grassroots organized movement level at a political party level then we can engage with the centuries old system of corruption and the and the entities there the human body families uh, of you know bloodline lineages that are addicted to this power we can engage with them um, at the level that they're actually oppressing us. There's a meme that I made a, a little while back now um, from a guy, I don't know if it was a TED talk or what, what, what it was. It was some guy giving a lecture somewhere that got videotaped and put on some internet service. And, uh, and he says, our activism is not commensurate with the problems that we face. It's the most profound thing an American has said about the American situation that is simultaneously applicable to the global situation and the spiritual situation of the entire species. The idea of war between good and evil is ego trap. That's why they put it in all the religions. The divine things that are the energies that are good and evil, they need no war. There is no need 
They have no ability to kill each other on top of it. The light and the dark cannot annihilate each other. So why would they spend millennia at war? It's not, it is not a thing that is uh, raining down on us from on high uh, and that we are oppressed by. It is something that dwells within us as individuals and we cough and spit and shit and piss out into the world. And to exorcise it absentmindedly the way we do because we've opposed ourselves and we've opposed ourselves and oppressed ourselves into a blinded uh, like enslavement that is you know just inherently blinders us to a lot of the way we actually function and thus we get these human symptomatic emblematic sociopath crazy motherfuckers uh, who are drawn like moths to a flame to these positions of pseudo power, these puppeteered, uh, highly controlled uh, acting roles of, you know, the original reality entertainment. That's that's the big breaking news, folks. Is that even before we invented TV, we had invented the reality show. And that's called politics. Uh, and that's long before America was founded. Uh, so we can stay on the revolving door of self-oppression, self-revolution, self-oppression of the body flesh. And that's a ride that people enjoy, I suppose. Or we can move on to the broader, bigger picture and the other bigger, deeper lessons. The more we fuck about here in the mortal plane and perpetuate this sort of crazy and let historical eras like Trumptopia spin out of control, um, the more fucked up we project our own fuck uppery into the spiritual realm, believe it or not. I'm here to say that as uh, an advisory warning from Mother Earth. Please stop uh, defecating in her and destroying and ripping up and commodifying and quantifying and packaging and selling her blood and her bones and her womb, the very fruit of her givingness. Uh, we destroy it and transit. And then we wonder why these iconic icon people in our society that we give all this attention magic to. Uh, we wonder why they're giant, egomaniacal, sociopathic, self-destructive. Um, you know, it's the conspiracies point to all sorts of groups, and I'm here to tell it to you, folks. It goes deeper than any group because ego is endemic to the entire spiritual network, the entire meta structure of the human species. Right? That's why meditation. Think of it this way: you and I are uh, small units in a larger body. We are the organs and blood and bones and cells and DNA of a larger entity. And because all things reflect themselves and scale down and scale up as above, so below, in fractal, infinite uh, recursion, and complexity uh, elevation. Um, we are our own sort of illusory individuated folks. Um, we run around with this illusion of separation, but we're actually all interconnected because we represent something bigger than ourselves as individuals. Once we understand that, and that's achieved, like a functional working relationship with that is achieved, uh, those who are that sociopathically bent out of shape will get healed and re-bent back to a healthy shape. Uh, and that is why those who oppress us minimize, ostracize, uh, ridicule, and uh, vilify, and, uh, you know, uh, 
surround with a bunch of noise and craziness, um, all things mystic and transcendental, because once you get on the like, just be one with reality as it actually is sort of path um, or lifestyle, if you want to make that choice, um, once you go there, you realize that all ideological systems are thought control and that there's nothing else more divinely beautiful than just communing with the actual thing that is. It will show you its illusoriness. It will show you you as a little tiny member of the species in this interconnected web of massive speciesness, and um, and verify it for itself. So, yeah, don't fall for his tactics, folks. He's here to he's a profiteer, clearly, and I've been calling him out for that for uh, era. But he's a master divider and conqueror. He sets up polemics for you to fight about and be distracted by. Because um, how many people uh, on either side are deeply well informed about what's going on with his relationships to Deutsche Bank and VB Bank and Spur Bank and all those banks that are either overtly, openly owned by uh, Moscow or covertly, sort of subversively um, you know, money laundering fronts for uh, Ru Russian mob. It, then that's not, like I said, that's, that's all the details on the surface, all the details of the reality show are the reality show of it. Don't fall for it. And then dig deeper and you realize that at the human species level, the same thing is going on. Donald Trump is a mirror to be held up before anyone willing to observe him deeply and consciously as spirit, as source, as I am through this body avatar. Uh, and he's there to remind us that we still have a lot of ugly hate and that a lot of our members of our body collective are still really caught up in the lies of, of separation, the lies of race, and the lies of supremacy over others, the lies of uh, you know, violence, of, of might making right, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Because he dog whistles in both directions so that y'all will fight with each other. The greatest resistance at this point, we've protested, you guys, in my living memory, never have I seen so many protests, so much open recognition of uh, public dis dissent, disagreement, and discouragement for the actions of the president. Um, and we've protested a lot before. And I get it. There's a lot of old-timers telling the youngins to simmer down now and to, to realize they don't know what it was like to be in the 50s, and 60s, and 70s, and for sure. But also, it was a long time ago, and this is now, right? Um, don't fall for his craziness anymore. I always love to remind people, I'm talking about it all the time, forgive me if it's redundant to you at this point, but the revolution, as one genius pointed out, the revolution has to happen in the mind or within spirit before it can play out in the streets. And it'll radically change how and in what ways and what flavor of revolution we're going to have. Thus the the urgency, folks. All right. Thanks for tuning in, as always. What was the point of me rambling about Donald Trump that way? Uh, he's here to freak us out and wake us up. Call me crazy. Call me a genius. Just call me. It's not quite here yet, but I am buying a Lion Line phone for live calls for my shows and to set up interviews and stuff for folks. Uh, so stay tuned for that. And instead of, if you can't call me yet, which you can't, drop me an email, theincorrigiblemrzeppo at gmail.com. May peace, love, and grooviness be with you. 
Stay tuned to my other segments where it all interconnects. Be good humans. <laughs>